Hey everyone, welcome back to Bold Faith Bible as we continue our study through Galatians. We are picking up in chapter 4, verse 21. I apologize about the, the break that we've recently had. We had some issues with the bug going around at our church, and we have um, actually taken a couple weeks break, but we are back at it again. So let's pick up in chapter 4, verse 21. In this passage, we're going to see Paul... Uh, use as an allegory the story of Abraham with his two women and his two sons. I have to say two women because they're not both his wife. His wife, Sarah, and his uh, slave, Hagar. So, just to give you a quick rundown of the story of Abraham, when he was 75 years old, this is when God told Abraham to go leave his people, leave Ur, and go to the land that God would show him so that he could make him a great and mighty nation. So 75 years old, that's when he leaves. He's told he is to, ha to have a descendant, and many descendants, right? By the time he's 85, he's still waiting for the son so that he can have descendants. And so he takes matters into his own hands. His wife, Sarah, says, why don't you sleep with my slave, Hagar? And so he does. And at 86, he has a son, Ishmael, from H Hagar. At 99, okay, 99, God again promises him a son. And Sarah overhears and she laughs, of course, right? And Isaac is born when Abraham is 100 years old. At 103, Isaac is weaned, moving over to solid food, right? And there's this big celebration, and Ishmael mocks Isaac, mocks the whole thing, because um, he's a rival. He, he's the older brother, right? Uh, he's like 14, uh, 17 years old at this point. 17 years old, and his younger brother, three years old, is being said will be the heir. So you can just imagine how that would just be really, really hard of a situation. So we have this, we have this um, comparison between Abraham's two sons, Isaac and Ishmael, the, his two women, Hagar and Sarah. So let's dig into the passage and hear what Paul has to say to us. Tell me, you who want to be under the law, do you not listen to the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the bondwoman or slave, and one by the free woman. But the son by the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and the son by the free woman according to the promise. This is allegorically speaking, for these women are two covenants, one proceeding from Mount Sinai, bearing children who are to be slaves. She is Hagar. Now this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, barren woman who does not bear Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor, for more, for more numerous are the children of the desolate than the one who has a husband. And you, brethren, like Isaac, are children of promise. But as at that time, he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit. Remember how um, Ishmael mocks Isaac, right? So it is... Now also that the unspiritual or the, um, those who are of the law persecute those who are of the promise, those who live by faith. Verse 30, but what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be an heir with the son of the free woman. So then, bre brethren, we, who are, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free woman. So we see in this passage this comparison of these two. We see Hagar, the slave, and Sarah, the free woman. We see 
Ishmael, right, and Isaac. Ishmael, not the son of promise. He is born of the flesh. Abraham just went out and did this. There's no miracle involved. There's no promise involved. He just tried to help God. Whereas Isaac is a miracle by God and is the promise from God. Ishmael and Hagar are slaves. The people in the Old Testament, people who are clinging to the law, trying to be justified by the law, are slaves. They don't have a relationship with God. Whereas those who are of promise, those who live by faith, have that active relationship with the Lord. Also, we have this, this present Jerusalem that Ishmael represents, this um, and Paul's talking about basically the Jews that have rejected Jesus, that that present Jerusalem, the, the temple and all that it represents, but yet devoid of accepting Jesus as the Messiah versus the new Jerusalem, the Jerusalem to come, which is the heavenly Jerusalem, the heaven, right? The kingdom of God. And this is the comparison he's showing. And he's saying, allegorically speaking, it's like this. Why would you want to be the slave? Why would you want to be part of the system that didn't work, that never actually helped you, that never brought you into relationship with God? Because all the people in the Old Testament, they lived by faith and were, were made pure by their faith, not by abiding by the law. Now, I think it's important for us to, to understand what Paul is doing here. He's drawing an illustration from the Old Testament, but that's not carte blanche for all of us to just go ahead and just pull random illustrations out of the Old Testament and then take those illustrations too far. We should never allow an illustration to contradict the clear teaching of Scripture, right? We can draw illustrations from the Old Testament, the New Testament. We can draw illustrations from your, your baking experiences at home, your um, family relationships. That's great, but it should always be according to the clear teaching of Scripture. When Scripture says, this is what it is, this is like this, this is wrong, this is right, this is what you ought to do, this is what you ought not to do, we should never contradict those things. When it says God is like this, we should never say, well, I think God is like that. No, doesn't matter what your illustration is, doesn't matter what scripture verses you pull out in order to, have, to justify that if it's not what the Bible clearly teaches. The scripture does not, you cannot pull a scripture out over here and then have it contradict a scripture over there. Which one's clear? Which one is the most clear? Because that's the right one. Perhaps you need to look at what all of Scripture says. Perhaps there's a lot to be said. Maybe they're both true and they, the contradiction is only apparent, right? It only seems like they're contradictory. Maybe they're both true. There's a lot like that in Scripture where both things are true. God is both full of anger and, and hatred towards evil, but he is also loving and compassionate. That sounds like a contradiction, but when we truly, by faith, understand, it's not. It's beyond us, but it's not a contradiction. All right. Well, hopefully you guys have a great Christmas week. Hopefully you have a great time with your families. And God bless you. Merry Christmas. Adios.